Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. And I've got a fantastic guest for you today, Matt George. He's the non-profit profit. He's the inventor of automatic fundraising. We'll hear all about that later. And um, I'm happy to welcome uh, Matt to the show. Matt, welcome. I appreciate you having me, Christopher. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot. It's going to be fun. So I know uh, I know we had connected through pod matching kind of, um, you know, very briefly, one to two minutes, talk about um, what you do, your story, how you got there and how the audience can benefit from your expertise. Yeah. So I was nicknamed the nonprofit profit by Kevin Harrington, the original shark. shark. <laughs> And so uh, it, it's kind of a, a cool little name, and and uh, uh, but it really talks about uh, my 30 years of being in the nonprofit business. I ran uh, uh, different nonprofits. I was always at at the helm of of, of all these nonprofits, and and uh, really what I saw was the tough things that go on in in our country and in, in the world. And and so it started at the age of 16. I. I started raising funds for a friend of mine that had cancer and and uh, went from there. And little did I know it was going to become a, a, a career. And and uh, I stepped down a couple of years ago as CEO of a uh, a very large children's home here in Illinois. And and uh, I started my own business because I re- really wanted to uh, act on my motto, which every day I would say, you know, it, it's your job to change a life and save a life daily. And and how can we make change for positivity in our communities? And and that's what I wanted to do. And so I, w- I knew I was making change along with my team. I had 500 employees. We had 1,700 kids a month flow through our agency. Uh, we were a, a, a rather large nonprofit. We had uh, annual revenues of 35 million. And and uh, but on the flip side, though, it, it's it's a business, but it's also taking care of kids, taking care of families and taking care of communities. And now I just want to uh, expand that and have it go not only nationwide, but global. Yeah, I love that. You know, one thing I always ask um, innovators and entrepreneurs is uh, their motivations. And, uh, you know, what is your why? Why are you doing this? Uh, you know, obviously, you're very successful. So what what uh, what drives you? I, I think what drives me is is that personal mission inside of me of taking care of people. I think I was born that way. I I, yeah. I thought that. I always felt that way. I you know I would wake up as CEO every day and I would sit there and I'd say it's my job to fight for the people who can't fight for themselves. And sometimes it was kids. Sometimes it was families. Uh, it's it's community. Um, I have another. Uh, belief that it's your job to take care of the community you live in. And so I, I, I've written several books and, and talk about that in the books of just taking care of each other. You know, we've, we've kind of lost our, our, our way in the United States in some sense, and we need to find our way back. And, and I think it, I think with this divisiveness um, really is garbage. I, I think when it comes down to it, it's about taking care of each other. And it's about understanding that your view and my view may be different, but it's a view and that's it. And I don't have to dislike you for a view. And 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 it trickles down because what, what I've seen um, is I've been in uh, on a cross country tour, 61 cities at the last part of last year. Uh, and on this change lives, save lives tour I was on and and I went around to communities and, and I saw pain. And what I what I never really got the answers were were how are are you really going to step in and make that change? So um, I think there's an opportunity there for all of us to do that. Yeah, it's quite a uh, it's quite um a, you know um you know you're quite correct in saying we've lost a way. I've seen you know again like I said um uh, you know I've seen just climate really uh, become unstable. And uh, I've seen, you know, the the national debt and, uh, you know, we're fighting these useless wars and our education, trans- all these systems are just falling apart and we're still wasting money on these, you know, very useless things. But um, so I love how you're taking that in and, uh, and, and trying to do something. So right. uh, kind of moving on is um, basically um, challenges and triumph. 
um, you know, when we talk about nonprofits, you know, we usually think about the good stuff, but, you know, what are, you know, obviously there's challenges and failures. So what are those that you faced and how do you overcome it? Um, and uh, what's been your most rewarding moment? Well, I, I think, you know, the answer to the first part is the biggest challenge for nonprofits right now. I think revenue is always an issue. So that's, you know, one of the things that I consult on and help groups with is fundraising. Um, but the other piece really is HR related, and that's getting people into the business, understanding that this business is a very rewarding business. Um, you can actually, you know, the, the difference in this business and working for a for-profit is, uh, let's say you're selling shoes or cheeseburgers or whatever it may be. At the end of the day, you go home and, and you just need to sell more shoes the next day. It, that what happens in in this business is um, people's lives are on the line. So you you take that with you to try to help them solve problems. And whether it could be families or whether it's kids or whether it doesn't matter who it is, um, that's that's the challenge that's that's going on right now. So hiring and getting good people into the business is is the hardest part. The most rewarding is seeing people win. Uh, whatever that means. Uh, and it means different things. But, you know, the bottom line is poverty is not going away. Uh, poverty is here to stay. But but it doesn't mean that you can't do good things in the situation that you're that, that you're in. It doesn't also mean that you can't ask for help or we can't help other people. And I think that's kind of the disconnect. It doesn't matter whether it's homelessness or whether it's uh, related to uh, mental health or whatever it may be. There is help out there. Not everybody knows how to get it, uh, but there is help. And that's what is the most rewarding thing is to be able to talk to people like you, Christopher, spread the word to say, listen, we're all in this together, whether you like it or not. And we have to sit here and help people. I love that. Um, how did you, um, why do people call you the nonprofit profit? I'm just curious um, how, well, how this came about. In my first book I wrote was called Nonprofit Game Plan. And um, it was doing really well. And, and it hit number one. And, and Kevin Harrington on Shark Tank, who, you know, his, his claim to fame is uh, many things, but he invented the infomercial. He had like the Jack Lillian juicer and the George Foreman grill and the Ginsu knives. And he was really promoting all of these huge products back in the, in the eighties and nineties. And, and uh, then all of a sudden um, I got connected to him and I wrote this book and he pushed me to write the book. And at the top of the book, he wrote that Matt George is the nonprofit profit. He is the CEO of our lifetime. And I, I couldn't have been more flattered. It was one of those um, compliments that I humbly um, took. But at the same time, um, I, I, I'm a realist and, and I'm not arrogant to a point to where it goes to your head. It, I took it as I have to be able to take what he's saying and others are saying and be able to use it for good. So that's what I do right now. I use it for good. Oh, yeah, I love that. Um, so uh, what are your key strategies for fostering community engagement and ensuring that programs and initiatives meet the actual needs of the communities they serve? It's a great question. I think, you know, one of the most overused terms and the term that I don't like uh, because everybody has their own definition of this word is collaboration. Um, people yeah. don't know what that means. And so they interpret it different ways. We need to we need to really nail down what collaboration means, and then we actually have to work together. And I, I, I give you a couple of examples. In my hometown, there's seven after school programs. Why are there seven programs? There don't need to be seven programs. There needs to be two great programs. So what needs to happen is the seven need to get together. And they need to figure out how they are sitting here and have the outcomes that they say they're going to have and actually make the change for these kids for these after school programs. We all know the stats are there that the most dangerous time for kids in schools between 3 p.m. after school and 6 p.m. That's when a lot of violence can happen or crisis or harm. So these after school programs are very, very important. But we need to yeah. do a better job of putting together best-in-class programs. So that's just one example, but you can take that across the board 
And that's that's something that every community can do better collaboration and understanding what that means. And the, the kind of a follow up is can base because I love this um, uh, community engagement and um, how is the philanthropic landscape changing and what should new or existing nonprofits do to adapt um, and thrive in this evolving environment? Well, there's a couple things that are happening right now besides the workforce issue. There's also board issues to where um, you have to have a good board and then you have to have good leadership. And then all of that equates to relationships that then it, that equates to dollars. And so you have to, in, in this day and age, what's happening is these funders, these donors, these grants, they're going to people and to organizations that are actually making the change and, they, and they're doing what they say they're doing. Example, in, in most grants, they're outcome driven. So if I accept $100,000 and I say we're going to decrease homelessness by 15%, I need to put into the program and put the uh, the project together to decrease homeless 15%. I can't accept the $100,000 and not do anything. And so what's happening now is the funders are tightening up as they should. I'll give you the 100, but you better do a good job. And that's what this is about. So donors are doing the same thing. I love that. Um, so. I really enjoyed talking with you. And so um, for those aspiring to make change um, and those inspired by your work, they want to make a difference. What first steps would you recommend they take to start their journey effectively? Well, first of all, you have to decide that you want to commit to doing something. And that's the first step, not just thinking about it, actually doing it. Then you need to do your homework and figure out where your passion is. My passion is to help kids. Your passion may be pets. If it doesn't matter what the passion is, then you need to really do your homework on where you can make the most impact. Um, you can be on a board. You can be on a committee. You can be on a fundraising board. You can actually go read to schools. You can do all of these different things. You can donate your time. You can volunteer on the weekends. There's a thousand things that you can do. The hardest thing to do to get going is to actually open the front door and get going. And so once you make that commitment, start slow, get involved, feel the change, get hooked, because once you're hooked in helping something, it will grow into something bigger. You don't have to go all in and say, I'm, I'm gonna be on a board. Well, there's a lot to being on a board. And it doesn't mean we don't need you as a board member, but at the same time, you want to make sure that you're bringing on somebody that actually is going to be committed and vice versa. So there's a million things you can do. You can check out uh, my website at, at themattgeorge.com. I have three books out. Uh, I wrote a book. My last book, uh, Starfish Among Us, is really about, it's for high school and middle school students that it really talks about taking care of your community, and it focuses on bullying and mouthing each other and all these things that you shouldn't be doing. Um, and so you can get, you can Google my name, but you can also, if you have any questions, feel free to get hold of me on social media, or you can actually, the easiest thing is to get on my website and, and connect with me there, and I can, I can kind of guide you through the process. Yeah, I love that. Um, and for all the audience, let's thank um, uh, Matt for coming on and um, be sure to give his socials a like and follow. Check out his uh, work. And um, thanks so much for coming on. Christopher, you rock. Thanks, man.